Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tells Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live on a Sunday afternoon, ready to do some podcasts and find us wherever you get your podcasts. The official weapon of the show is... Phone chair. An unofficial sport. (laughs) Bullet ball. And bullet ball. Extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, And there's all all kinds of stuff to get into. But, uh, you know, as always, I have to start first with asking uh, Karen, uh, is there any, uh, do you have any, you know, uh, random thoughts or banter? For yes. Today? You do have banter. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, let me uh, pull up the banter music. All right, Karen, why don't you go ahead and hit me with that smooth banter? Uh, one of the first things is uh, we actually found some sugar-free gummy bears, which I'm happy we found. No, we didn't. Oh. We, oh, wait. No, you're right. We did. Okay, I'm about to say. I thought they were reduced sugar because I bought them. Anyway, we... So the ones we get are what Albanese or some shit mm-hmm. is what they're called. I, I forget the name. And of them. they are the fucking. Best. And those are the regular gummy bears. Yes. They are amazing. Yes. Uh, you see them in the store. They always like on the high shelf. Okay. Mm-hmm. They top shelf gummy bears. They top shelf gummy bears. But we were trying to find some sugar free alternatives lately, and sugar free like there's zero sugar Jolly Ranchers. Those shits are, are flames. flames. Okay. You, if if I. I gave somebody those, and they didn't know them bitches were sugar free. They would eat them, and we could tell the difference. They honestly might taste better. Yes, they're absolutely delicious. Zero sugar Jolly Ranchers. I, I, I please put, go try them, y'all. I stand for the. I stand up for those. Me too. Ten toes down. They are absolutely delicious. But we tried a couple of different gummy bears because sometimes we like gummy bears, and we tried a d- couple of different ones. I tried Joyride sugar free gummies, keto candy. Zero sugar, six grams net carbs, just the whole title. Low calorie vegan snack with sugar alcohols, with no sugar alcohols, zero sugar fruity gummy bears. Terrible. I, those ones taste I'm like, like add the sugar because I was like, am I chewing a goddamn tire? They were terrible. Just add the sugar. They taste like eating candle wax. It's oh, like they were so stuck bad. Stuck to your teeth. It's everything you don't want to buy. Gummy. Right. You be like, did anybody test this or taste this first? Then I tried the, another kind later. Kiss my keto gummies. Low carb candy gummy bears. Keto snack pack. Healthy candy gummies. Sugar free gummy bears. Keto gummy candy. Keto gummy bears. Right. These also were not good. They were better than the other ones, mm-hmm. but they were still not good. They the- taste like when you go to Big Lots and you buy some uh, Big League Chew. Yes. And it's like, I thought they stopped making Big League Chew in 1998. It's 2024. And you're right on both counts. They did stop making it in 1998. You are eating 1998 gum, and it tastes like it was made in 1998. And that's how these gummy bears taste. Yes, and to think about them, I am a gummy bear snob. I've always been a gummy bear snob. When I get gummy bears, I like to touch food. So I like to gummy bears, gummy worms, any form of gummies. I like to squeeze them first. And for the first two, I squeezed them, and them bitches felt like a little small pill. But I was like, my mind was like, ooh, this is not going to be good. It ain't going to be good at all. I'm like, gummy bear's supposed to squish, squish. This bitch is like, mm, I'm not giving. Oh, and I was right, and them bitches was nasty. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, yeah, we found some Albanese joints. Um, yeah, they're sugar-free, and they're good. And they're sugar-free. Um, and, yeah, they actually are really good, so. You're right. We found that. Mm-hmm. We did good, and I, uh, I've been drinking more water, so I got me a a, a hydrate a, a, a smart bottle, but I got a larger size smart bottle because mm-hmm. I realized uh, once I was started drinking and keeping track of my water, I would be I'd be sitting at my desk, and I would sip through the water too quick, and then get mad that I got to go fill it up again. And I was like, "Oh, Roger got a larger one. Let me get a larger one too." So I got me a larger uh, water bottle. 
so that it could uh, keep track. I'm like a kid. You got to reward me for drinking my water, damn it. Tell me I'm doing good. Tell me I'm doing great. <laughs> give, give me all of the awards, the kudos. I want the achievements for doing what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Anything to motivate me to drink more water. So I am here for it. And I got it. And I, I, uh, they didn't have purple, so I got pink. So I, cause I wanted mine to stand out from Rogers, and so the small one is pink. So I'm, I got pink too. So I'm really excited about getting on top of that. And I got black already, cause I love black people and respect ourselves, you know, and our culture. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I'll, I'll have a couple things. We went out to, I wanted to go buy a hat, so we went out to the outlet mall to uh, go to Lids, cause I realized I have a North Carolina hat, but it's such a, it's like a big flamboyant ass hat it's 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 like hella annoying it's hella uh, <laughs> arrogant and, and i wear it in circumstances where i want to be an asshole like it's 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 a it's it's i love the hat it's um the old school style that got like like a hip-hop style almost where you got the uh string that goes underneath your chin and it's a big brimmed hat that goes all full around mm-hmm. i wore it on game theory before <clears throat> but i i i like i i remember i wore it after uh the Tar Heels put Coach K out of his misery for the last time. And uh, I was just walking around with it all day smiling. So anyway, but it's not really a hat that you can, I can really wear in like casually anywhere else and just do shit. Right. Like it's, it's you can't drive your car with the hat and all kinds it's of stuff. In a way. So anyway, I went and bought like a normal baseball cap, <clears throat> Carolina Tar Heels hat. And while we were at the outlet mall, there was a photo booth and it was, a Marvel photo booth, mm-hmm. meaning you could take pictures <clears throat> in the booth and then it prints out at the end, instead of giving you like a printout of four different pictures, it prints out like a comic book cover or mm-hmm. a movie poster and you pose and then it like stylizes your picture to make it look like it's a comic book and then it puts it, you know, prints it out. And one we it doesn't have the best instructions Mm-mm. and it's kind of hard to understand there's not a lot of space in the booth you know i'm big so it's already that but even if like they, the pictures they have on the outside are like four people in the booth as a family i'm like that's fucking impossible in this little ass booth yeah like two people being in that shit is is, t- is, is, is tight right and that's even normal like, like yeah. standard size yeah. yeah so like five people is crazy um, but yeah, so, uh, it was, and then like doing this thing with Karen, you know, I'm, I'm showing, I'm like, I did not understand. I'm understanding. Yet. I'm like, okay, you look in the ring light. That's what's really taking your picture. You don't look at the screen <laughs> because the screen you're looking down like this and the picture will be of you looking down. Um, and when I tell y'all, we took like six pictures and Karen just could not. <laughs> I d- I right. was I could not understand the assignment. <laughs> I she was like, not... the picture that Roger was like, no, look up. <laughs> but I do like our picture that we ended up with. This is the best we were gonna do, so we just <laughs> had to stick with this. But even in this picture, you can see I'm looking at the camera, and you can even see the ring of the camera in my eye in my glasses, and Karen's still looking down at the screen. <laughs> I was just like, fuck it, this is it. That's that's as much as we got. It was fun. I had a ball though. I ain't gonna lie. I know we waste our dollars, but I had a ball. I was like, I did not understand the assignment at all. I did it all wrong. It was fun, and uh, I was saying, you know, and you are fun, and hanging out with you is fun. Yay! And it was a spur of the moment, silly thing to do, and it was it cost too much. It's like eight dollars. Yes. And I'm not even sure if we did it right because I think. The way it is offers you at the end, it's like however many copies of it, like put hit hit a button and say how many copies of each cover do you want each picture. And I just hit one, but I think I could have hit more. But they never explain to you how much it costs and how many pictures you're allowed to have. Right. So I'm going to go out there probably by myself and take some pictures because I know I'll do it right. <laughs> and uh, I'll get my money's worth. <laughs> but uh, it was it was a fun time. Yes, because we've done that before. We got like a really old school picture of us in one of them booths uh, when we was like teenagers. Oh, yeah. New ones, too. We yeah. took one at the when we went to the movie theater to see the Xbox um, 
uh, showcase last year, yeah. the theater had a Bad Boys for Life. Like you can say Bad Boys, you can say all these different ones, and um, and we took a pic. We took pictures. I have it. It's taped to my um screen right now. So uh, at any rate, um, the other thing I was gonna say too is I've been re. I was reading a book. Uh, I've been reading this book forever, but uh, I I wasn't. I didn't have my Kindle with me, so I couldn't read my I mean not Kindle I didn't have my tablet with me when I went out when we went out to eat yesterday mm -hmm. and so I didn't have the ability to read comic books which is what I've been reading a lot of lately um and it's still reading it count uh it but does. instead I had to read my Kindle and so I'm reading of course Paula J Giddings when and where I enter the impact of black women on race and sex in America and it's kind of like a history of black act black women activists in America and she threads together the narratives to show how their stories and impacts intertwine and how different progress affects different people. And, you know, I'm always reading this kind of stuff and I'm always learning new shit. And something that I had seen widely shared um, was the story of Rosa Parks and uh, Claudette Colvin, Colvin, um, Col Colvin. And, the way that it's been told anecdotally or people have said, talked about it versus the way Paula J. Giddings put it, I just want to illuminate some things because I feel like a lot of people have gotten some, what I would call maybe some bad information, okay. right? And uh, of course, now this thing that's happening on social media is people revisit history in the most bad face salacious yes, they way do. and they're like look at these taking out a lot of context and everything like one thing that's been going around was uh i saw it's just so weird that the timing of this happened in this way but last week i saw people spreading a picture of um rosa parks and her husband in front of his car and it was like if i would have know her husband had a car the whole time uh you know i wouldn't uh you know rosa Parks shouldn't even be getting celebrated like this or whatever which is patently stupid in in many ways right but one of the things in that picture is the picture was taken a year after the bus boycott now that doesn't mean he never had a car that whole time but you fundamentally don't even understand what the bus boycott was about and mm. how it happened right now do you know about claudette colvin colvin I've heard, but not really. Like I heard that she was the first person, and blah 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 blah. And oh, go ahead, no, tell oh, what you do, do know. If you don't know what I was, this okay. is not a gotcha question. Okay, okay. So, so from from my understanding, and this is somebody who just hadn't really. You don't have to keep explaining. Okay, just what do you know? From what Cause I, I bet you, most people in the audience know what you know. Okay, from 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 what I have gathered, she was the first person before who refused her seat. And I think she may have been pregnant at the time. And because she was pregnant at the time and dark skinned it, they was like the coalition, whoever the people over it was like, you don't fit the stereotype. You, you're not quote unquote politically correct. You're a single mom. So we don't want to use you as a face of it. And she kind of got lost in the annals of time. Okay. And the other two details are she was a teenager and she was unwed. Okay. okay. So the story that has been told anecdotally just through word of mouth is well you know what really happened is they didn't want a dark skin uh unwed pregnant teenager to represent the movement because they didn't think people would support the boycott if she was the face of it so they basically <laughs> relegated her to the back and no one helped her no one gave a fuck and and then they went with light skin married rosa parks who uh, who they never mentioned was also an activist, uh, who was actually, you know, an activist with a lot of hi history and work under her. They never mentioned that part. They mm -hmm. just make it seem like, you know, they, went, like they wanted a light skinned pretty woman. It's mm -hmm. all colorism. Here's the thing. I'm reading this book and this is, uh, this is a passage from it. Just weeks before Rosa Parks fateful bus ride, a young black teenager had refused the bus driver's demand to move to the back of the bus. Nigger, the driver had commanded, I told you to move back. The girl replied, I done paid my dime. I ain't got no right to move. The driver repeated this, his order. The young girl repeated her answer. Finally, the driver stopped the bus in the middle of Dexter Avenue, called the police, and the teenager was taken away in handcuffs. 
When the girl was jailed, E.D. Nixon believed that this could be the test case he was looking for. Rosa Parks called a meeting of the NAACP youth group to discuss plans for a campaign. But there was an unforeseen hitch. The girl's mother forbade the young girl to appear in court, for her daughter was visibly pregnant and unmarried. So all this time, people have been like, oh, the movement wouldn't accept her. And it sounds like, one, the movement would have... So there's a couple other things people don't know. This movement started organizing before they had a test case because black women specifically were being so disrespected constantly on public transportation that it wasn't like they were going, okay, we need to set up a situation where someone won't move their seat. No, women were being uh, confronted like this already all the time. It's the reason they organized was because Mm -hmm. it was happening a lot. And it wasn't just a matter of, we're tired of sitting in the back. It was, um, uh, it, it, it was uh, people getting beat, people getting thrown off the bus. You know, um, the, just the general disrespect, like you said, and arrested and stuff. Yeah, like that, stuff right? like that. So it wasn't just a. So that's why this movement was already waiting. They just needed a person to get behind, right? And so they were gonna. It was gonna be her, and her mom said no. Which, when you think of it from that perspective, you understand. But yeah. that's not that's not all of it, right? Because what happens is people think of, and this is just the way we're built, people look in hindsight. So what people think of when they think of Rosa Parks is, oh, she got all the glory. She got all the fame for not taking, oh, oh, look at her. She got to be famous. And it's so fucking dumb. Yes, all the fucking harassments and death threats. Like that shit comes with it too, y'all. It's so fucking dumb and short-sighted as if when they started this movement, they all knew, like, it'll work out. It'll be fine. Damn. All of us will be alive. Do you know in the year, because this went on for a year, this boycott. In that year where they were organized and there were black people, like, carpooling and all kinds of stuff, they were pulling black women out of cars and beating them. They were, like, white people were trying to break this boycott like they were right like this this wasn't like they just said damn they won't take the bus the end Mm -mm. no this this was physical threats this was a bunch of stuff how bad was it um here's another passage for uh in that chapter as for parks rosa parks the decision to be the symbol of the challenge to southern segregation must have been difficult despite her activist background the road ahead was a dangerous one and her husband pleaded with her not to take it now, her husband was known, he's a very light-skinned man, and he was known as being, like, uh, an alcoholic and stuff, and he was not as revolutionary as she was. Um, Virginia Durr is an, another activist that was that was a friend of hers and, and, and recollected. He had a perfect terror of white people. The night we went to get Mrs. Mm-hmm. Parks from the jail, he went back to her, we went back to her apartment, and he was drunk. And he kept saying, oh, Rosa, Rosa, don't do it. Don't do it. The white folks will kill you. So this is another reason that I'm like, we have to be careful about the framing of things. Because it's not like her light skinnedness was going to save her. Right. They Like, she became the face of Negro opposition to segregation in in, 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 in the South at that time. And it was like, yeah, we'll absolutely fucking kill you. You were already on our nerves as an activist. Right. You know, and and they got Martin Luther King involved and stuff. The other thing I didn't realize, and I just didn't know this, and I'm I'm sure like maybe behind the scenes, hush, hush, maybe something was said, I don't know. But as far as we, as far as is in this book, it was not planned for her to be the person that was the face. So it sounds like Claudette Colvin uh, was uh, just another black woman that, you know, had been disrespected. Um, I don't know if that inspired Rosa to be like, fuck that. Next time I'm not moving. Right. Or what. But I know that when they had that meeting to make Claudette, you know, the the face, they clearly saw they had the apparatus to do a boycott. Mm hmm. And so I wonder if, because they did not know it would be Rosa. They didn't plan on it being Rosa. 
I but the second that it was Rosa, they were so fucking organized for whoever the next person was gonna be. Right there, they had flyers on the streets to boycott the bus in two hours. Ooh, they was before weird. the internet, before right. cell phones. Come on now, before mass production. Like when we talk about organizing, like that's organized, right? Like this shit where it's just like I'm not gonna watch an NFL game. Cool. That's why I don't. No, it's not disrespect, but that's why I don't even say, oh, you boycotted the NFL. Because I'm like, no, you didn't. Boycott got ass. Boycott got organization. It got demands. Boycott got demands. Boycott ends if it works. Boycott. Right. Boycott. And you return. Right. Is is people coming together. And so that I thought that was so interesting that because you can't divorce that she knew that had the knowledge that they had the apparatus to do a boycott. Right. So I don't doubt that. She was when she said, I'm not moving. That she meant, and, and she, she knew, too. like, yes. and we're, the fight starts now. Mm-hmm. The other thing I didn't know until I read this the boycott was initially supposed to last, you know, how long? Probably about a month. One day. A day. They were supposed to boycott Monday. Like, that day was going to show everybody. But they had organized so well. And black people, of course, collectively being oppressed at this in the same way for everybody, right? Which is something that there's like we are tired of this bullshit. Like maybe if you're rich and you can afford a car, you can be like, well, I'm not, I don't feel oppressed. But one, it, there weren't that many black people that were doing that well, right? And two, black people that had cars became part of the the, the, the movement to help people get back and forth places, right? Um, and and it was not like as simple as just and the black people did it all for themselves. They ended up like um having white, like white people would call and be like, When you gonna come? And you know, you need to get on that bus and get here so you can take care of my kids and shit. And that and the black women were like, You either gonna take care of your own kids, or you gonna have to wait for me to get there, however the fuck I get there. Or you gonna have to or you gonna have to wait till the boycott over, or you're gonna have to come get me. Right. That's it. Yep. You like go- people stuck to their guns, even in the face of losing financially like huge things because they had they were stuck together Mm -hmm. so if you're black and you're within the black community even if you have a car you're still affected by the fact that nobody else can fucking get anywhere right so you know you had dudes that had cars now they they carpooling four five women to work every day you know that Mm -hmm. kind of thing um and it's just such a beautiful story that i'm sure you know selma talk tells it in, in movie theaters uh you know, but I just have always anecdotally heard this story of like dark skin Claudette Coleman. Mm-hmm. They threw her to the trash, and I, and I'm like, damn. I mean, listen, colorism is fucked up. Respectability is fucked up. Mm-hmm. I can see it, but then to, to read it for yourself from a historian that did the work and not just like a nigga that just pulled me to the side at the flea mall, right? It, it's like, oh wait, no, that makes sense too. You know what I mean? So. It it was just interesting, um, and especially about the mom protecting her teenage daughter. That makes so much fucking sense. Mm-hmm. It it makes sense because as a parent, you want to protect your child, but at the same time, you kind of want your child to have autonomy at the same time. But as an adult, you look at your child and go, "Well, are you really ready for the comp- for for the uh, Consequences, repercussions of the things that about not only happen to you, but the uh, to fall upon the entire household. Now, us, your brothers and sisters, and everybody involved, your extended family are all going to be target off of this action. Am I, as a parent, willing to quote unquote throw my child to the wolves because that's how it's going to look, even though that might not be the purpose of it, but that's how it's going to look and appear? Am I willing to do that? And for most parents, the answer is going to be no. And it's tough because like this happens a lot. And I, I'm glad I've never been a parent to have to be in that situation right? to tell my child, you need to be the focal point for some of the worst harassment that anyone's going to ever experience. You may die, but, but, but you need to make be an example needs to be made and you need to be face of it or, Hey, I'm sorry to the movement. I'm sorry to black people. I'm sorry to everybody that wants to get this boycott off the ground. But y'all have you to can't do it with else. my daughter. Because yeah. my daughter's pregnant and this world ain't and black and young and unwed and this world ain't been no motherfucking been silver kind. staircase for her. So I can't I can't in good conscience as a parent let y'all use my daughter 
uh, as the, you know, so uh, anyway, this is why I read. This is why it's better than a thread. This is why it's better than, um, you know, just getting the information secondhand or people talking like it. This is why I read because this stuff kind of stuff is in the books. It's not right. in the documentaries. Right. A lot of times it's not in the, you know, the, the social media has become so anti facts and anti context. I, I can't rely on it for in, in good conscience because people just be saying shit. Right. And this is another reason why I don't judge people, but I understand people's frustration about certain things and why, you know, people don't step up to the plate. But if something happens to you, it does not mean that you automatically want to be a face of a movement. This is why I was against uh, the bird watcher dude. How everybody turned on him. I was against that because I was like, no, no, no. They don't have to participate in this process, I understand you're mad. I understand you're angry. I understand you're upset. I understand you want justice, but that individual person does not have to be a face because they're going to have to be the one to live with the consequences, repercussions, and harassment and shit. Not you, right. the person that's demanding that they, that they do something when if it was your child, you wouldn't want to sacrifice it. If it's your family member, most people are going to say no. Everybody says yes, yeah, but no. The average person would say no, not me and mine. But yeah, you can go out there and get slaughtered, but not me and mine. Yeah, I just like I said, I respect the bravery of people and I try to celebrate the people that do. Correct. And I don't really come down that much on the people that don't because I understand that it's easy to ask everything of someone that's not you. Right. And most people would not pass that test for themselves. Mm -mm. Most people are going to end up doing the thing that, you know, makes their life better or easier, not the thing that is taking a stand for everything. Uh, one more thing for banter. LeBron James reached 40,000 points last night. That's a lot of points. Is he anybody else in that group? No, it's a group. One oh, it's, oh, oh, it's a one to one group. My bad. Yeah, the 40,000 point club just has him in it. Um, <laughs> the one and only member. It will take, uh, it, it, it someone put it will take a person averaging 24.4 points playing 82 games a season not missing any games for 20 years to get to where LeBron got. Now, of course, Ooh. now, of course, no one's going to do that. And it didn't seem to take into account like playoffs and stuff like that. But the point being is, you know, it's damn near impossible. Um, what I think is interesting, though, is one, it's a manufactured plateau, meaning 40,000 points wasn't a thing that we were like, the 40,000 point club, he him playing this long and this good made us be like, oh, yeah, the 40,000 point club is a thing. And this isn't like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar where he's on his last legs, touring around the league, playing against, you know, playing, getting 10 points, but just adding to his total. No, this is, he's still a guy that is a top somewhere between 20 to 10 players or whatever in the NBA mm -hmm. at his age right now. Um, but I find it interesting how as we get older um, and I'm a person that always wants to see the next thing. I'm not, I don't get too stuck on the past. I, my friends and pretty much everyone my age gets stuck on the past. They're not, I'm more of a futurist. I would like to see something I've never seen before. Agreed. I like to see somebody accomplish a thing that, and B Brian's been that for me. He's been the guy that, I'm like, God damn, how this is a thing I didn't even know was possible. Yeah, because you know? I watched him his whole career. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a protector of the legacy of Jordan. I don't think it needs protection. I right. Think it's I was there. People. I witnessed it. Mm -hmm. It was great. He right. was great. I don't right. really I enjoyed the time. I don't know what knocking LeBron down does for Michael Jordan in any way. Right. But I thought this was interesting because uh uh, I think my man Dragonfly Jones has said something on Twitter essentially about how a lot of the LeBron James hate is really just people um, people thinking they're protecting Jordan and Kobe and their kids are growing up. They're going to only know LeBron. I agree. And one day they're going to hear your hate field ran on LeBron and they're going to look at you like you're fucking hater and crazy. And they're going to be right, by the way. Um, because it is kind of hateful and crazy to try to denigrate this dude. Like, you know, it reminds me of when I, and this is how long, you know, being alive. I remember when I was 21, I go to, I would talk about Michael Jordan at my job 
and we talk about basketball. I'm like, oh yeah, Jordan, man, greatest player I've ever seen. Yeah, beast, yeah. And there was an older guy there who said Jordan is not that good. Oscar Robinson was better. Oscar Robinson averaged a triple double. And I said, what? Like, I, I I hear you, but you're telling me what I'm watching right now is not greatness. Right. And so it he that was as ridiculous to me as we're gonna sound talented kids. LeBron James wasn't you weren't watching greatness right then, right? Or it was it wasn't that good, you know. And and meanwhile, even the haters are being like, Well, I'm saying he's top three all time. I'm saying he's top five all time. Okay, I'm saying he's top. Well, if you're saying that, someone else could think he was number one. Cause once you get down to one, two, three, four, five, it's a matter of taste, opinion, yeah, preference. what you value, yes. preference. None of these niggas have the same accomplishments. Mm-mm. Bill Russell got eleven rings. You know, if, if, so we we can't just say it's rings. Um, other people, uh, you know, Jordan has six and zero record in the finals. Never went to a game seven. Has a bunch of times he never made it to the finals. Yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> a bunch of times we don't knock that, knock him for that. Um, but someone else is pu- pushing Bill Russell could say they did. Will Chamberlain got a hundred points in a game, you know, all kinds of records and scoring stuff. So, anyway, my point being, man, being a hater really takes out so much of the fun. I think of witnessing something new, and I'm just appreciative of what this dude accomplished because I just remember him being 17 yes. and being a guy that people thought um, he's not going to. Uh, live up to any of the stuff people say about him yeah and i also and he absolutely did yeah and and truthfully uh superseded it truthfully because uh lebron james for those of you that were around and i might be wrong but lebron james was one of the first high school people i remember that their games was aired on national television like before then didn't nobody put no fucking cameras and and air high school games on fucking national TV for everybody in the world to watch. Either you were there or you wasn't, or the school taped it. It was on tape delay. We talked about it on the, the, you know, 11 o'clock news. But with LeBron James, he was such a phenomenon that they was like, oh, no, 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 no. The world got to see this. And all of a sudden, I'm watching a 16, 17-year-old on my TV, and I'm like, wow, this is great. He's going to be great. And just, I was just excited for his future. But nobody could have imagined, even him himself, he would become what he has become. Right. Um, and the records he's breaking and all that stuff is just like, it, it's unimpeachable what his legacy is. So, um, but I just thought it was like interesting to see somebody that fulfilled the promise um, that many people doubted along the way, man. I mean, and it's fair to doubt it because what we were being told was this motherfucker is going to go down as one of the greatest motherfuckers of all time. We have seen so many players who didn't like weren't it wasn't even greatest of all time talk, just they will be a good player and they couldn't even do that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot, a lot, even during his career, and this was amazing. Is right. LeBron James has been in the league so long, he's played with 40% of the players that have ever played in the NBA. Right. So um, I just thought that was amazing uh to see that last night. Um, and like I said, to not have not been a hater his whole career, I've really gotten to enjoy all of it. I mm-hmm. haven't, and I enjoyed all of Michael Jordan. I just, yes. I just never, you know, I know my friends and all the sports people, they want to argue it all the time and shit. I just never gave a fuck. Mm-hmm. And, and like, I'm like, when, is it good basketball? Nigga, I'm here. And when like, uh, when someone passionately argues either side of it, I'm like, okay, cool. That's for you. Right. You know, but yeah, I, I absolutely, uh, shout out to LeBron James. What a fucking milestone. And yeah, no one's going to follow that shit probably. Um, but I'll be here for the next motherfucker that can, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into the news. What's going on in the news? Um, 
man. I actually meant to play coronavirus news, but uh, okay. it's too late. It's too late now. We we'll just <laughs> we'll, we'll do that next. We'll Again, do that next. we'll do that next. Um, <laughs> a Los Angeles mall announces a new policy that restricts unsupervised minors after certain hours. Yeah, something. A lot of times they do this because. Kids be out there fucking shit up. I know it's sad for the kids, but they like, look, we can't have y'all in here fucking shit up. Then we looking like, well, your parents and you don't know. No. Right. Well, in this case, there was a large brawl that occurred in December 2023. So at the 3 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, the Del Amo Fashion Center in Torrance will prohibit unsupervised shoppers under 18. Any accompanying adult must be at least 21 years or older and stay with the minors throughout their visit. The mall allows up to four minors to be accompanied by one adult, provided they remain together, and the adult assumes responsibility for the actions of the minors under their supervision while at the mall. Um, yeah, I think it's a couple of things I was thinking about. One, malls are damn near dead anyway. Yes, they are. Just because online shopping and stuff is, and inflation and everything else has kind of really fucked the malls over. They're not hangout spots as much as they used to. No, like, they're not. Kids aren't socializing as much with the, like, got to get out the house and go to the mall and go to the food court and, you know, hang around the Chick-fil-A or whatever the fuck. Um, but then the second thing is, in reaction to, like, a brawl happening on your property, you have to do something. Right. Um, you don't want to be held accountable if somebody get hurt on your property. I do wonder how they enforce it, though, because as a black kid, I remember... Malls being like kind of like a weird place where shit was subjective. They didn't have rules like this where they it seemed like they were evenly enforcing them all the time on everybody. Mm -mm. It would seem like subjectively they'd be like, okay, black kids hanging out by the bench. We need to get an officer involved. Right. White kids hanging out. They're just being kids. You Correct. Know? So I do wonder about that part of it. But yeah, it was just a lot going against malls already and if kids aren't shopping there i don't know like adults don't really hang out at the mall no I, as a grown as adult i go to the mall I, I got a purpose and a vision i'm not just fucking hanging around the mall last time we went to the mall i remember it was pretty much closed at eight y yes like shit was closing oh. down mall you stay over to like nine, nine or something nine nine thirty sometimes ten depending on where you were yeah and like Weren't a lot of employees in the stores. Some of the stores weren't even open. Yeah, they were closed already. Um, it like the mall is just not what we grew up thinking the mall is. So, mm -mm. Uh, but man, just what a kind of sad state of affairs um, for the kids. Because I wonder where the kids kind of go. Right, and depending on, I try to find it particularly people that don't live in big cities. For some kids, the mall is the spot because it's like, what the fuck else I'm gonna do in this whole dump ass town? There's like, there's nothing else to do and nowhere else to go. Right. Um. So yeah, the now if you have a job there, you can work there after three p.m. So if you're a minor right. under eighteen or whatever, and you work in the mall, um, the, um, you're permitted to work inside your place of employment after three p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but when your shift concludes, um, you basically gotta go. Yeah, they're like, you can't hang, you gotta go home. <laughs> and so like, you no. gotta follow the new regulations. It if you're when you get off of work, you gotta follow the same regulations as a customer would have to, even though you work at the mall. So you can't kick it unless an adult is there to supervise. You basically gotta get off your shift and go. Right, because and the thing is, from their perspective, they're looking at it from a lawsuit. I understand it, but they go, no, 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 no. We don't want to be responsible for your child if they get hurt or if a brawl happened, hospital. We we don't we don't want any responsibility for anybody. So everybody just get the fuck up out of here unless you're an adult, basically. Right. Um. So yeah, I just thought that was an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Uh, CVS and Walgreens will start selling abortion pills this month. Let's go. Yep. Um, so uh, it comes in more than a year after both retail pharmacy chains uh, said they would pursue certification from the FDA to dispense the pill. Um, Mifepristone pristone can be used in conjunction with another medication, misoprostol, to induce an abortion at home. 
A vast body of research shows it is safe and highly effective, particularly in the first trimester of pregnancy. Patients seeking mifepristone need a prescription from a medical provider. Uh, Misoprostol is already available in pharmacies for patients with, with a prescription, which uh, is going to probably end up having to take something like this. I'm sure the GLP, this is they, next. Yeah, they're not going to lay down lightly on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad. Basically, you can buy it over the counter now, right? Yeah. Uh, no, you need a prescription. Okay. But you go to your doctor, get a prescription, and go get it. Hopefully, we, I mean, this is probably going to lead to some stories of a few of those rogue pharmacists being like, oh, it's against my religion or some shit. But in general, I think this is a better thing to have this available. Um, and then we'll see what the GLP does. And this is one of the reasons you got to vote. You got you got to motherfucking vote because this these things matter. And, you know, when it comes to this, people have their ideas and theories but there are a lot of different scenarios for people to take these pills. And it's very frustrating when you talk to people that are very ignorant about it. You know, there are some people who they just naturally have a miscarriage, but they're having a hard time. And these pills help with the process, you know, of their body naturally going through the process it was going to do anyway. It's not always, you know, the, the quote unquote scenario that people try to paint like it's just this evil thing. And what's very, very frustrating about the whole scenario is that people think whenever people make these decisions, they make it all willy nilly. Like people don't actually sit and think and contemplate all like the consequences and all this shit. Like, oh, yeah, Papa, like, no, people have thought about this shit. There's also a couple more things. They won't dispense the pill through the mail um which is which could be a bit of a burden mm -hmm. and they're not going to put it in any states where abortion is up uh, it's going to be available in all states where abortion is legal and where they're permitted to do so but there's going to be some states where they can't do it and because you can't get it through the mail or whatever people are going to have to like find another way the other thing is in some of these states with the extremely restrictive abortion laws this may be people's only choice in the first trimester when, when they're saying stuff like, if you're six weeks pregnant, you can't get an abortion. Right. Many times people don't know they, they're six they, weeks pregnant because you need know. to miss a period. And you might just be like, oh, my period's two weeks late. Well, that means you're six weeks pregnant, possibly. Now, it's illegal for you to get an abortion. Um, and you may have to do something like this or get someone to give you this. It's just, I'm sure they're trying to fill um, a void in what I consider to be hum humanity and legislation um, with uh, with these two, with selling these medications. Agreed, agreed. And I'm glad they're out there. I want them to continue to do this. And like, I know y'all get tired of it. If you, if you do, I don't care. You can stop the podcast, motherfucker, vote, 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 vote. That shit matters. Who you have in office, who your local people over your governor and senator and congressman that shit fucking matters don't blow your responsibility off as a citizen and then complain when shit don't go your way right um uh illinois judge who reversed a rape conviction has been removed from the bench after a panel finds finds he circumvented the law what so this man sparked outrage by reversing a rape conviction that involved a 16 year old girl uh, that judge is now being removed from the bench after a judicial oversight body found he circumvented the law and engaged in misconduct. The Illinois Court Commission removed Adams County Judge Robert Adrian from the bench on Friday after they held a three-day hearing in Chicago in November on a complaint filed against Adrian. Uh, they say Adrian engaged in multiple instances of misconduct, abused his position of power to indulge in his own sense of justice while circumventing the law. Um, so in October 2021, Adrian, this judge, had found 18-year-old at the time, then 18-year-old Drew Clinton of Taylor, Michigan, guilty of sexually assaulting a 16-year-old girl at a graduation party. Okay. Um, so the state judicial inquiry board filed a complaint against Adrian after he threw out the previous conviction in January 2022. So he threw out his own conviction. Threw out his own conviction saying that. 148 days that the uh, Drew Clinton spent in jail, that's punishment enough. And so he basically tossed it. It was a mandatory four-year sentence, but he basically... Um, and he didn't think that was going to throw no red flag. Somebody was going, hey, 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 now what are you doing? He said, I will not send him to prison. 
This is not just, he says, I will not do that. Um, uh, so then um, the girl who was assaulted, Cameron Vaughn, um, who came forward publicly, told the Associated Press in November that when, when she was now 18, it's been a couple of years since the assault, right. that the reversal of the verdict completely shocked her. Um, you do not expect that. Yeah, so she and her family basically were like, we need to get this judge out ousted. Yes, it doesn't make sense. Um, they said the judge told the court, this is what happens whenever parents allow teenagers to drink alcohol or, <gasps> to, or to swim in pools with their undergarments on. Essentially blaming her. Right. 2022. Um, uh, so then uh, Vaughn told the Chicago Tribune following Friday's decision removing Adrian, she was very happy that the commission could see all the wrong and all the lies he told the entire time. I'm so un unbelievably happy right now. He can't hurt anybody else. He can't ruin anybody else's life. Right. And as a victim, you, you're rehashing everything all fucking over again. Right. Yeah, you're definitely re-victimizing the person by yes. being like, one, you're blaming her for her own sexual assault, but then you're also being like, and I mean, if anything, we're being too hard on, on the rapist. You know, we can't ruin his life. Um, but yeah, he, he um he let's see, Adams County court records show that Clinton's guilty verdict was overturned because prosecutors had failed to meet the burden of proof to prove Clinton guilty. But in Friday's decision, the commission wrote that it found Adrian's claims that he reversed his guilty finding based on his reconsideration of the evidence and his conclusion that the state had failed to prove his case to be subterfuge, basically a lie. A respondent's attempt to justify the reversal post hoc. So what they think is he said what he said in that courtroom about feeling sorry for the dude. Then when he had to file the paperwork on why he reversed his own judgment, he said, oh, I reviewed the evidence and the evidence didn't prove that he was guilty. And they're like, well, then you, one of these is a lie. Yes. You tell me which one. You didn't say in the courtroom, I don't think he did it. And that's why I'm reversing it. You went, well, it's just too harsh. And that's not really justice. 148 days in jail is enough. Um, so meanwhile, the guy who was found guilty of sexual assault a rape, he cannot be tried again under the same crime under the Fifth Amendment. Um, you know, the right to, yeah, yeah. So, um, and he tried to have his record expunged, but it was denied in December, uh, February 2023. Yeah, then they're not gonna wipe that off. Yeah, I man, it's just such a, it's I mean, one I, of those I, things where you can't, I can't even believe you can do that, especially it's your own judgment. Like what happened in between the it, like well, the whole time where you just like when the jury found him guilty or whatever the whole time you were like, fuck oh man I was really rooting for this kid you know what what like what happened for you to just go back and be like okay now that I, now now I'm reversing it if anything it's like okay if you do this as far as that you need to have a really really super valid reason and they like no this is not a valid reason. Like right. you need evidence, like, like what evidence was presented to you as a judge for you to be like, okay, new evidence have came to light. Like in that situation, like I'm saying new evidence that came to light, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to reverse my decision based off of blah, 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 blah. But you didn't have that. It was based off a fucking feeling. They was like, no, your feelings don't mean anything. If you don't have any facts, what are we doing here, sir? Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, I f all you can do is get them off the bench. I, I don't mm -hmm. even know what else you can do with that. Um, so yeah, it's just crazy. Um, let's see, we'll do, uh, let, you know, let's do coronavirus news. Let's, let's get into that. Uh, let me pull up the coronavirus music so we can get to the remix. Um, boom. Coronavirus. Again? Look, here we go again. We got variants. Really need to keep a mask on hand and follow the plan. Get the vaccine and second shots. Whether woman or man, black out who tips is doing they part, but the dummies expand. Niggas would rather believe a bunch of misinformation. Fuck y'all idiots not getting shots. Now we gotta regress. If we keep going in this direction, we never can rest. Never can get back to the lives we be living the best. Damn fool, stop the lying. Stop the intubation crying. Cause it's your fault that motherfuckers dying. <laughs> Damn fool. 
fool, stop the lying, stop the ventilator crying, cause it's your fault, the motherfuckers dying, I do not understand this shit, I'm not a fan of this, we were like one win from the pandemic championship, but fuckers wanna leave it to game seven, with Giannis Delta cool pole, blocking forward progression, and Chris middle fingers to your plans, man, damn, huh. looks like it's no Drew Holiday for you and your man, I'm sick of black people dying for real, so I'm just writing this new piece to let you know how I feel, huh. coronavirus, yeah. Fuck that COVID-19, it's unseen, it's creeping in the air for you to breathe, yeah. Huh. So fuck that COVID-19, it's unseen, it's creeping in the air for you to breathe, yeah. Coronavirus. All right, coronavirus news, just got a couple quick stories. Uh, Sopranos actress Dred DeMatteo, 52, slams Hollywood as a cesspool and hints that she has quit for good in a blistering takedown. After blacklisting from the industry amid COVID vac scandal, saw her forced to turn to OnlyFans to survive. So it's interesting. I saw the headline from a couple, maybe a few days ago, and it was just all being like OnlyFans, OnlyFans, OnlyFans. Just hey, basically, uh, this this woman who uh, was an actress on The Sopranos uh, was you know the the hot chick on Sopranos. She. Uh, has OnlyFans and she credits it with saving her life. And I was like, okay, I guess good for her. I don't, you know, right. interesting that she framed it that way, but I don't know what her life was like. And Mm-mm. I saw some of it was like, you know, my, my mom got sick and all this stuff. I was like, okay, she must've just really needed money. And I guess Hollywood wasn't call, calling. Well, I guess in the full context, she refused to get vaccinated. So she then says Hollywood blacklisted me because I wouldn't get vaccinated, and I'm not gonna. And I basically retired and went to OnlyFans. Um, choice. Because my acting work dried up, and my agent dropped me, and I didn't have money, and I had to go to OnlyFans. Everything it was a choice here. This kills me. What about every? What about you making choices and dealing with the consequences and repercussions of your choices? Don't you understand? They had a standard because they didn't want people to be sick. You didn't want to do it. That was your right and your choice not to do it. And the consequences was if you don't do this, you can't work. Working is not a quote unquote right, particularly in America. It's sorry, it's just not a right. But a lot of white people think they had a right to work, and everybody else be damned. But I, as white, I needed i have to have a job i don't care if the rest of you get laid off of me i'm super special i no matter what i do i got the right to work and you realize it didn't work that way so then you turn around and you went to holy fans which is also a choice you did not have to do this you chose to do this and now you're turning around and you're blaming everybody and everything around you but your choices that led to this she did say she starred in a film after the covid mandates lifted but before the strikes happen um but i i don't know what film that was or whatever um so yeah it's just kind of interesting um because i think also with the covid people and whatever other political belief she has because who because sometimes that has shit to do with it too where it's not as simple as like Oh, it's just I didn't want to take the vaccine and now I'm blacklisted. It's like, and your agent dropped you? And uh... yeah, there's some other factors <laughs> happening too, right? You know, um, but I mean, they're also determined to be like, I was the victim of this thing. Yes, regardless. Like, like it wasn't a pandemic that happened to everybody. Like, we weren't all trying to get by the best we could. Mm-hmm. Like, vaccines don't work and didn't save lives. It's, it's you know, like, like you weren't a risk on the set to people. Um, based on some of this stuff, it's it's just interesting the way it's being reframed mm-hmm. now. And I don't think you can reach folks like this because I mean, her truth is what she's saying. Like she ain't gonna ever be like, well, shit, maybe I could have took it and just you know it wouldn't have been a big deal. It's like no, absolutely not. It's a moral stance, for right? Me. Well, then I don't feel bad for you. Then I just don't because I'm like, yeah. okay, you made a choice. These are the consequences of your choice. You can't get mad because there were consequences and repercussions to the decisions that you made. The last thing I'll say, too, is it could be um, a lot of people feel this need to do like a sob story to justify being on OnlyFans or any type of sex work. Like you can't just be like, it's easier money. I'm good at it. I I. You know, I don't have to do all the things and jump through the hoops to do Hollywood shit. I can set up some photos or whatever mm-hmm. and make a lot of money just doing this right. and live my life. 
and it's like, well, no, you can't say that. If you can do anything else, you're a bad moral person. So you need to show us that life was so hard, you had to start busting that thing open. And then we'll be like, well, hey, life was hard and it's fine. You know, we I'll jack off to you now because it's like charity. <laughs> <laughs> now I get to be a good person. No, if people are going to judge you, they're going to judge you regardless. So that don't even matter. It's just for the fact that be, you made the decision. You have to live with it. But it's like, I, like you say, I have to do this sob story versus doing maybe something that I wanted to do, which is your choice. You could, instead of just saying, this is what I want to do and moving on, you want to blame everybody else and everything else around you instead of being, instead of standing 10 toes down. But like, this is what I want to do. Uh, the CDC has shortened the period of time that you need to isolate uh, after testing positive for COVID. Um, now it is people with respiratory illnesses, not just COVID, may resume daily activities if they have been fever free for at least 24 hours without the aid of medications and if their symptoms are improving. Um, acknowledging that people can be contagious even without symptoms, the CDC urged those who end isolation to limit close contact with others, wear well-fitted masks, improve indoor air quality, and practice good hygiene, like washing hands or covering coughs and sneezes for five days. Um, it was coming to this. It was. And especially was. when the funding dried up. Yep. Um, and it's not just us. Mm -mm. Um, and it's not just the CDC. It's the world. Yeah, everybody's moving on. And... This is something that we're just going to have to live with. And I know that's very, very hard for a lot of people to understand. I think Roger came to this conclusion way before I did. It took me a while to grasp my mind around the concept of we're just going to have to live with this. Because, you know, for me, I was like, we didn't have to be here in the first place. But I needed to base <laughs> how... I need to I need to base myself in reality. No, it didn't have to be like this, but the reality is it is. So I had to look at what was in front of me and understand that human being human beings as a totality don't give a fuck about nobody else. Like 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 I'm talking about me. I had to come to this conclusion. They don't care about making other people sick. They don't care about other people around them dying. They just don't. Um and so I had to come to with a conclusion that everybody's literally on their own. And we're, this is not going to be a group project. This is an individual solo project. And we hope you make an A. You know, it's some C's and D's out there and some F's. But we hope, you know, you do what you're supposed to do. Stay vaccinated and boosted and all that stuff. But a lot of people not. So they fall in that C range. So for a lot of people, the, 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 uh, the initial shots have waned off. So they, they are catching it again because they're not fully boosted. So you're in that C range versus the people that are kind of in the A range are the people that go, every time they say they got a shot, I got my black ass out there. They didn't waver. They didn't sway. You even have some people that, bitch, I never took my mask off. Right. My family is protected. You have some people, they are like, I am acing this group project, you know. But for most people, they don't have the wherewithal, which I understand. For and for it's not even a cultural thing because places like Japan, where it's cultural to wear a mask and shit, they still dealing with it. Mm -hmm. China, where they literally locked people down in their houses with no freedom and choice, made them like wasn't a suggestion. Stay your ass here. If we got apps on your phone, it'll tell you stay your ass here. They couldn't stop it. They had to basically just go ali ali oxen free. Um, and I think because we individualize and moralize the shit, everyone's on some like, well, if, if everyone would just do what they need to do, that was never a possibility. It's a six billion people project, eight right. billion people on the planet. Yes, sir. Pro group project, as you said. So it was always going to come down to us living with it because you're not going to cure a, a novel coronavirus normally. You know, we can't cure the common code. Um so yeah, it's been it's been interesting to see the CDC because what I feel, and I know this is opposite of a lot of people. I've always felt like the CDC was only saying what they thought people would do. Yes, and people have always been in denial about that because liberal people, especially people that listen to our podcast that identify with us politically, they're rule followers. They're good. They're good guys. They're good people. They do what they're told. They do what's best for everybody. That's what they typically pride themselves on, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think those people are like, well, when the CDC tells you to do something, you do it, and then that it'll stop because 
we have we those are the best guidelines and that's why we get what we want and they just have kind of been numb or giving up on the idea because you can block somebody or not socialize with them in real life they've given up they've forgotten that like 50 percent 40 percent whatever the population is like i'm not doing any of the shit Mm-mm. I'm not doing it. I don't care what the CDC says. Mm, not no I'll man. go to jail. I'll, I'll go. Die. I'll I'll die, as you said. I'll I'll uh, you know, like it's we. This was always going to fail mm-hmm. because you. It doesn't. Even, we didn't even need that large of a percentage, but we definitely have more than that in America. So, like, we were never going to be like other countries anyway. Um. But even even with the CD, if the CDC would have said whatever, they they have no law enforcement arm. CDC can't even enforce this shit. It's all guidelines and suggestions, and, right? And local municipalities all the time, even before we had a vaccine, would be like, "We ain't doing it here, so we don't give a fuck what the CDC say." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and like I said, I I was one of these people. Who and I'm still mad that anger towards people who just said fuck it is still there and that anger will mm-hmm. never go away. But I had to come to the reality that uh what's in front of me is the truth, and the truth is most human beings don't care about their fellow brethren, no matter how much they pretend to care, they actually don't. Because if they care, they would vote. If they care, there's just certain shit people that actually care and really, really truly care. And it's not just a catchphrase, and it's not just something they post online, and they would do actions. And actions means voting, and actions means doing other things other than the simplest thing possible to get an artificial pat on the back that will fade away, and then you go and find another artificial pat on the back. I'm talking about something that has sound results that will last your lifetime and your kid's lifetime. That's what I'm talking about. And so... Once I came to that reality, I was like, oh, we're going to live with this. And these numbers are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller today. But like, fuck it, just go back outside. Because this, like you say, most people are doing this anyway. Most people have been stopped wearing masks. Most people have, you know, been just doing a normal, regular ass activities. And they're like, if I catch it, I catch it. Okay, it is what it is. It's like the flu, which is not. But, you know, it's, it's like the flu, you know, and shit like this. People are still dying from this, not at the same rate as before, but people are still dying. They still are finding out things about long COVID because think about long COVID. Long COVID is as long as COVID's been out there, which is not really that long. So we really I do not really. I, it's going to be years before we really find out all the different things that quote unquote long COVID can do because every time you turn around, people are getting brand new fucking symptoms of this quote unquote long COVID and nobody really knows what is going to morph into and or what it's going to turn into because scientists are still studying and things like this. And this is why I never got mad at the CDC when they kept changing it. And motherfuckers are out here acting stupid when the CDC kept changing the rules because they was like, hey, we are changing the rules because we know motherfuckers aren't following the rules. So we're going to we're going to change it to something that we think is reasonable, something that we think that most people would abide by. And people was like, well, they keep changing the rules. Yes, that science changes all the time. So, you know, most of us don't deal with science as far as the 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 the, the uh, uh, hypothesis well, just, part of it. I just think people thought foolishly, but, you know, I think we were scared. Yes. And I think a lot of people just thought, I want things to go back to normal. And so they were like working backwards. If we just go back to acting normal, then things are normal. It's like, no, this shit is still out here. But I knew there would come a time when we were going to go, quote unquote, back to normal in the ways that we do, we had been before, where we just never thought about how you could die from the flu. You could die from RSV. And people do. People, yeah, people don't get vaccinated against the flu. People don't get vaccinated against all kinds of shit. People don't wear masks. We were eventually going back to normal, quote unquote, regardless of what that really meant to people. But um, yeah, so the CDC reduced the guidelines. Uh, they still they'd also advise that older people over 65 get a second updated coronavirus shot. So they say, you know, this spring, be looking to get another shot. Um, um if they most COVID nineteen most COVID nineteen deaths and hospitalizations last year were among people sixty five years and older. An additional vaccine dose can provide added protection that may have decreased over time for those at the highest risk. 
Um, there was the 11 to one vote on this advisory commission and one abstention. So I guess one person refused to vote. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, they still are recommending you get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And every time they come out and I, and the one thing I am glad they stopped doing, which frustrate me, I'm glad they stopped putting age restrictions. I think the biggest reason why they stopped putting age restrictions, because they was like, either you're going to get it or you're not. Well, also people weren't taking it. Agreed. So it's just going bad. People, it was wasting. Yes. But um, yeah. So, you know, just letting people know. And if you think it's just us, dismay as the UK government halts cash for world renowned COVID program. So the UK was definitely one of the people that or one of the countries that people here would go see if they can do it. Why can't we do it? And number one reason we can't do it, motherfuckers don't care if Republicans get elected or not. Mm -mm. And so Republicans immediately shut down the funding. It was it was they 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 like we've basically been out here on our own for a minute because, yes. you know, and, and of course it's it behooves Republicans to do it. Um because who's going to get blamed? Biden. It's never going to be them. Mm -mm. No one's ever going to say like, yo, we're probably the only podcast that says, yeah, Republicans specifically shut down aid that we would have kept getting yes. if Democrats had, had had the majority. Don't sugarcoat that bullshit. Blame but, the party that actually made the res is responsible. But the vast majority of people I've ever had, heard talk about this will just say like the government. Uh, Congress, uh, Biden, right, and it's like no, it was specifically some bad faith actors that shut it down and yes. said, "Y'all ain't getting nothing out of this. Go back to work and die." Like we don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now even in uh, the UK, government support for their recovery program is to end in a few weeks' time. Central financing for the program will halt. The scheme will only be able to continue thanks to funding from a group of U.S. based ph philanthropists. So if it wasn't for motherfucking United States business people or whatever, uh, people, charity, the program would be completely over. The move is dismayed. Senior scientists would say it is another worrying example of UK's life sciences sector being shortchanged by the government. We knew recovery had huge potential and that was realized in a very short period during COVID. But now that dream is being unrealized, said Professor Peter Horby, one of the co-founders of Recovery. Right. These are people that spent their whole lifetime. Like, they want to know about this shit. They want to try to fix the world and shit. And they like, we know shit costs money. So when the money dry up, that means I have to find other ways to fund these projects. Britain had, Britain did some of the best, world's best clinical trials, vaccine development, and genomics work. But a lot of that has just been thrown away or starved of investment. Yet we badly need to be alert of the dangers of future pandemics. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's just wild that, um, that they're, they're done with this is the recovery. The randomized evaluation of COVID-19 therapy is a drug testing program that at the height of the pandemic involved thousands of doctors and nurses working with tens of thousands of COVID-19 patients in hospitals across Britain. Trials were carried out in intensive care units and wards crammed with seriously ill patients. In a day-to-day -day regular clinical medicine, it's absolutely critical to work out the differences between what you think might work and what actually works right. and what doesn't. Right. And they say recovery did exactly that. It managed to pinpoint four effective medicines while conclusively showing that eight overhyped drugs were not working. Uh, for example, the anti-malaria drug hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, they found out through those trials from recovery that it actually doesn't help patients. Right. And you need people to do that work or else you have charlatans like Donald Trump touting hydroxychloroquine and then, you know, uh, Joe Rogan on his podcast selling that shit and, and getting a bunch of people to, to do this thinking they're protected when they're not no, at all. No, they're not. So yeah, it's just it's been interesting to to that that's getting losing funding too. But it's 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 like obviously coronavirus and COVID has been hard and terrible and a and a just a horrible thing for everyone to go through. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it showed what can happen when people work together. And all that shit is kind of it's like we already forgot those lessons. Yeah, because just. 
in the age of the internet and the age of everything being quick and the age of everything being fast, I don't know if you have to be over a certain age. I don't know. Even old people have short, short-term memory on certain shit. Mm. But, you know, for me, I remember shit. Like, I go, oh, okay, these things impact me. Like, that's how you grow and learn and evolve and shit like this. And, you know, this is why people are always caught off guard. People are always shook. People are always shocked because every time something happened, they go, they respond to the emergency put out the fire and then just go back to shit like the, like, like the fire never happened and they don't go back and remind themselves of why these things took place. And then it happened again and they're back to square one. And it literally does not make sense. Like, are you even paying attention to what's happening? For most people know, most people know they, they just don't because it's not required of them. It's not required of them to care. It's not required of them to, um, do these things. Uh, a lot of people, particularly in America, they look at things as just blame everybody else, blame the government, blame politicians, blame the doctors, blame everybody else. But me as an individual person for taking accountability and responsibility for my actions. And I don't even want to be held accountable when I do shit contrary to what the people are telling me that are scientists shit. I don't even want to take responsibility that everything is everybody else's fault but mine. All right, let's get into some fucking with black people. <laughs> fucking with black people. Fucking with black people. Fucking with black people. Fucking with black people. All right. Let's talk about fucking with black people. Jeffrey Osborne sued for allegedly embarrassing concert goer picked to sing with him. So apparently... Danielle Buchanan and Maneva Curry filed a complaint in the Superior Court of California stemming from an encounter with the singer at the Greek Theater. According to the women, they attended Jeffrey Osborne's show May 6, 2023, when a crowd participation invite turned dark. Osborne allegedly had a team member select uh, concert attendees to help him sing one of his best known songs, uh, You Should Be Mine, the Woo Woo song. Buchanan was initially selected when she grabbed the microphone to help Osborne sing. The stage camera quickly panned to her, plastering the eager fan across the large screen for all to see. However, she says Osborne promptly stated that he wanted a white person to help him perform the tune. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Now, I know some people was like during Black History Month, but it was actually May 6, 2023, so... That wasn't Black History Month. Still pretty bad. Buchanan, who was visibly embarrassed, stated, I'm white on the mic in an effort to continue with the performance. This only led to the microphone being taken from her with Osborne seeking another participant. Now, my question is, is she white? Like, why is she saying, uh, so does she not look white enough? I'm, I'm confused now. Damn, I'm looking up her name and uh, Jeffrey Osborne. I'm pretty sure that the, everybody's face is plastered everywhere. Yeah, I'm trying to see if, like, is any pictures of her. Because I see pictures of him. Like, oh, he being sued, but I don't see the pictures of the women. And now it matters. Because I assume this happened to black a black woman who was saying, like, you know, oh, he said he wanted a white person, and I'm suing because it's racist. Mm -hmm. But if it's a white woman, and he said she didn't look white enough, so he picked a different white woman, well, now I don't <laughs> give a fuck. <laughs> and this the article... I, I, don't I, have, want, I want you whiter. Yeah, this article don't have no pictures for me to judge off of. Right. To look for myself. Um... So yeah, Curry, who was next to Buchanan and recorded the incident, claimed to feel similarly embarrassed and humiliated. Yeah. Nothing happened to you. Right. You was just there. What? How would you be embarrassed from him saying? Okay. Uh, together, these ladies are claiming racial discrimination, not just from Osborne, but the crowd as well, as they were unable to enjoy the remainder of the show. What you gonna sue the crowd to? What did they? How you gonna ah! find them? Just stop participation. Just do your show, sir. Just do your show. They claim to have left the concert emotionally disturbed based on the public humiliation. They were afraid to engage socially in their lives for months. If you don't get out of here, child, don't nobody even know who, who you is. 
of like you acted like everybody saw that. Like we were, oh, you mean the girl from that 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 concert? Chad, don't nobody know who you is. And eventually, as a result of the pain, it's something I had to seek psychotherapy. Uh, Buchanan says she tried escalating the matter to the Greek theater for a resolution, but she was ignored. But of both, course, both she and Curry are now demanding two million dollars in a jury trial, citing emotional distress that had them reaching for the therapy couch and avoid social scenes. Osborne has not responded publicly. Zero mm-hmm. to a hundred. Zero. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say zero unless we see a picture of them and they black. Right. Because honestly, this sounds like elite Karen behavior. Just like, may I speak to a manager white people shit. Like, just like, maybe he said it in jest. Maybe, you know, like I said, I need to know that these motherfuckers were black before I can take their side. Now, if they were black, I actually do understand some of it. I think, obviously, it's a legal fouling so you're embellishing on how embarrassed you were and all that shit of but course if if you're black and he did this i feel way different but you going i am white i'm like mm, hmm i don't know sis so i'm gonna give it zero for now until otherwise if we get more evidence the score will go up or down <laughs> court imposes nine hundred thousand dollar tax penalty on terrence howard after he says taxing descendants of slaves is immoral Hmm. Well, in more of this, uh, Terrence Howard has been ordered to, to fork over nearly a million dollars in back taxes and penalties, though he apparently had a reason on why he avoided taxes. Um, so yeah, it, he he voiced his feelings on the case in a recorded message to the tax attorney in November of 2023. He slammed the claim in the voicemail and argued that it was immoral. It, it's a more for the United States government to charge taxes on the descendants of slaves. 400 years of forced labor and never received any compensation for it. Now you have the gall to try and prosecute and charge taxes to the descendants of a broken people that you are responsible for causing the breakage, man. Yes, yes, they are. I, I don't know what to tell you, but yes, yes, sir. They want their money. They don't care. In the second voicemail, he continued, In truth, the entire United States should be, by default, become the property of the descendants of slaves. But since you do not have the ability and the courage to do it, let's try this in the court. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring you down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. And the federal government going to say, okay, well, I still want my money. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. matter what, what you do, what you say. They're going to calculate it out, and they're going to say, yep, brother, we need our money. It's in it or not. We don't care. We need our money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, ironically, he has the perfect uh, response to this um, from his his acting career. Uh, he, he already kind of spoke on this. Do you need some money? Okay, maybe that's maybe maybe that's what he should be talking about. <laughs> Something going on. Do you need some? Um, yeah, it's it's I mean, here's the only thing I will say. Obviously, once you bring up slavery and why we shouldn't owe taxes, I mean, I'm on your side. The problem is you only bringing it up for your rich ass self. If you would have been like on the forefront of this issue for all black people, yes. If I would have been like, oh, you mean Terrence? Well, I know why Terrence Howard owes money because Terrence Howard doesn't think any black people should pay taxes to the United States. And he's been very vocal about that and supporting other people cases when they owe back. Nah, he just waited till he got caught on some mm-hmm. taxes and was like, black people shouldn't know anybody anything. You're like, oh, nigga, that's a. That you're pretty sneaky. That's pretty sneaky, dog. But I mm, zero to hundred. <laughs> I'm zero. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fifty because I kind of understand what he's saying, but I just his lack of bringing this up for anyone else just makes me feel like this is a slick way to get out of paying taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, and especially since it's back taxes, so it's not like you 
are asking even for reparations for black people. You just like, I'm not, I'm not paying my taxes. I'm counting that as reparations. Now, hopefully he won't end up in prison because government don't fuck around. Ask Lauren Hill, ask Wesley Snipes. They don't give a fuck how famous you is. Child, they'll, they'll take your money for hit your bank account. All right, last story for, for fucking with black people. Missouri GOP candidate for governor was only an honorary KKK member. What is an honorary, like an honorary degree? The fuck is this? Yeah, he called 1 800 Clan Nection. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did they do? Just send you a robe in the mail? Uh, the, right. <laughs> the name of the pro white man, Daryl Leon, Mc, Daryl Leon. McClanahan III sits atop Missouri's gubernatorial ballot. Ballot. I guess these are photos of him. Um, you're either a member or you're not. What is this? A man with the history of honorary membership in the Ku Klux Klan not only managed to make it on the unofficial ballot to be the Republican nominee for Missouri governor, but he may even appear atop the official ballot when GOP voters vote in the primary this August. This is what happened when you fucking gerrymander and voter suppression mm-hmm. state to hell because now the only people that can run are Republicans. And when the only people that can run are Republicans, eventually the most right wing, insane, bigoted person will get to the top of the ballot because the competition is going to be a bunch of people being reasonable. And you don't have any reasonable people to appeal to because you fucking made sure that there would never be any level of like to the left voting or anything that would actually um hinder you that and also is one of those things to where you have in this situation put like this if it was more the the quote-unquote the standard you would have people that would follow the rules most of them would uh, but once you get to the right or the right or the right, they deregulate, they, they uh, uh, deregulate, they defund, they don't like the media, they don't like the news, everything's fake news. So, so the media that would actually take the time to comb these people as they should to put this information out on, hey, you know, before they even start running, a lot of times y'all try to drum them people out and make it so them people can't do their jobs. So that now you have these nuts out here getting the job who shouldn't even qualify for and if you did any ounce of investigation you could find it from a fucking google search but because you know you've kind of made it where it's almost impossible to do that this is the result yeah um so those revelations um came to light when former missouri representative shamed shamed dogan i don't know him uh, tweeted out a screenshot showing the unofficial candidate filing list for governor. On it, Darrell Leon McClanahan III's name sits atop more well pump, well-known GOP contenders like Jay Ashcroft and Mike Kehoe. The candidates' names are listed in ballot order, and because McClanahan drew a low number, his name appears first. So when they say atop the ballot, they don't necessarily mean he got the most votes. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess uh, he says he's never been in the KKK, just uh, honorary. Um, no such thing. You're either in the group or you're not. And the pictures we have shown the audience, he's literally hanging out with like KKK people and doing the Nazi salute in front of a burning cross. All right, Karen, zero to 100. This gets a Jakar. Jakaris. Yeah, mm-hmm. this gets a Jakar. Child, I don't I know it. Um. Yeah, it just infuriates me because the only white people are, are can get away with this bullshit. You you let somebody black be like, yeah, I was an honorary member or anybody brown of a gang, they would fucking have a goddamn fit. But yet this man is allowed to be uh, associated with fucking Nazis and, and the Ku Klux Klan and everybody turns blind now. Mm-mm, not buying it. All right, let's move into the last, or well, second to last segment. Let's do a little guess the race. <laughs> It's time to guess the race. 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 Oh, and uh, but before we go on, would you, uh-huh. would you be an IRM member? That means you support the bullshit they do. So yeah. it's one of them things where, where you're going, yeah, you should be fucking disqualified. Right. 
he wants to be in, but I guess he didn't pass the background check. I don't know. Uh, police bride assaulted at a wedding reception. We're not guessing the race of the bride, but oh, the no. assaulter. A wedding guest argued with the bride Saturday evening before assaulting her and striking multiple wedding goers with his hands and feet. Well, goddamn. Right? Everybody was kung fu fighting. Uh, yes, they was. Cops alleged that Ronte Stokes, a 45-year-old ex-con. Not Ronte! Attended the February 24th nuptials of Anita Brooks, his sister, at the oh. event hall. Oh, no. So you show your ass at your sister's wedding. In Largo, Florida. During the wedding celebration, Stokes got into a verbal altercation with the bride. The defendant battered the bride and created a disturbance at the reception. <gasps> this ain't the first time they fought like this. Does the husband get involved is the question. Because if it's your wedding night and your bride gets slapped up and you don't do shit, I feel like it's also your divorce night. After striking a 48-year-old Brooks, Stokes was escorted out of the reception hall and struck several other victims a, a group that cops charged included his 65-year-old mother, a niece, his brother-in-law, and a bridesmaid. Yeah, he's out of control. This is not the first time he showed his ass. The definition of anybody can get it. He was hitting mm -hmm. the women, the men. He didn't give a fuck. Mm -mm. Old people, young people. When questioned by police, Stokes allegedly, or I mean, reportedly admitted pushing his sibling to the ground. Uh, court records indicate that alcohol may have played a a role. He don't say. In this 10 p.m. rant page. That's why you gotta have a closed bar. People say don't have an open bar. I say not even just open, a closed bar. Not not even you could pay for it. It's closed. Water only at my wedding. <laughs> we not have we not here for a good time. We here for y'all to give me things and go home. <laughs> right? Don't no want fights. no problems. No fights. Uh we doing we doing junior high school rules. <laughs> Everybody got to dance with enough room for the Holy Spirit between them. Okay? <laughs> uh, uh, Stokes was booked in the county jail early Sunday on five battery counts, which were charged as felonies due to prior felony battery conviction. Stokes also was also hit with a misdemeanor criminal mischief rap for allegedly throwing a ceramic lawn chair into a glass door as he was being removed from the reception venue. Stokes, who has a lengthy rap sheet, was convicted last month of disorderly intoxication and fined five hundred dollars. He has also been found guilty of possession of fentanyl, uh, fentanyl, marijuana, and has spent a combined total of more than ten years in Florida state prisons. Woo! Wow! Uh, yeah, yeah. So, all right, Karen, guess the race of the brother of the bride. Yeah, he black. Everybody's black, and it's and some of them cases are mm. probably against some of the same family members that he was beating up on. Mm. Okay, all right. Wedding basher, black <laughs> wedding basher. That's good. This wedding day fight sponsored by Hennessy, black. Oh no! Tyler Perry presents. Why did I ruin my sister's wedding, black? <laughs> oh. Joe says someone should have found that jump in the broom and swept that man's head up out of there, black. Who invited this fool black? And y'all bet not go, go bail him out either, his black mama. The correct you bet answer. not bail him out. Right. Uh, how was he already out in the first place? Honestly, I, how do you, why even invite him? Uh, the correct answer is black. Uh, yeah, so the correct answer is black. That's him. Um, can't imagine what the fuck happened, but he seems like maybe he gets to drink and it don't matter what happened. Uh, yeah, and I'd have been like, uh, no, don't even invite them. If they come, we right. call the cops. Because we already know he's going to be a problem. They go, you know, we're going we're gonna to have an open bar. Don't nobody want to deal with him. Why everybody else get to give a speech but not me? Mm -mm. Strip club patron battered with cash stack. Oh, no! We beating y'all with money now? A strip club patron was walloped in the face with a small stack of cash by a female worker who explained to arresting officers that this is a place where money is thrown everywhere. Police were summoned late <laughs> Tuesday night to Body Talk, a topless club in Port St. Lucie, Florida, Not body talk. to investigate an alleged battery on a male customer. Oh, The victim, who we're not guessing the victim, we're guessing the people, the Worker who threw the money. Okay. John McKelvey told cops that he was talking to several employees of the establishment about his career. 
Uh, was you also talking to him about Stripping trying to career? get through school? Yes, of course. Uh, and acknowledged that the women were upset that he had not provided them any tips. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm already off his side. You sit over there talking to strippers of death and you not tipping them? Get a therapist. Ain't that the truth? Get a friend. Go join Nigga, a Facebook Where the group. dollars at? Where the dollars at? If you ain't about that, why did you come? Um, right. Um, Did you put a dollar in my G-string? If not, sir, you wasted my time. The 24-year-old McKelvey, apparently ignorant of strip club etiquette, said that he did not see any signs stating it was mandatory to tip. Nigga, you in a goddamn strip club. You're in a strip club. You, you Have you never heard of a strip club? How'd you even end up in the strip club? That's a good question. Did you just wander into a strip club? This all sounds like excuses to be cheap. Yes. I didn't even know you're supposed to give them money. I thought women just took their clothes off and talked to you, and that was it. Mm -mm. I do this for a living, sir. The employees were upset that the victim had not thrown money at them, which was a common practice in the establishment. A friend of McKelvey's told police he was drunk and had been talking about having a lot of money and not wanting to provide a tip. I knew he was lying. I knew this motherfucker was lying. Which apparently led to a 9 p.m. confrontation with Victoria Jones, 28. Come on, Victoria was like, I've had the, the fuck are you talking about, nigga. Let me go make some money. You wasted my time. Jones told sheriff's deputies that McKelvey was drunk and being rude and had been following employees from table to table, <gasps> verbally insulting them. I believe her. What? Jones told cops that she picked up a small stack of money and threw it towards the victim who was struck in the face with the legal tender. She claimed the cash was tossed in a non-aggressive manner, adding that this is a place where money is thrown everywhere. Court records do not indicate in what capacity Jones works at Body Talk or how many singles were involved in the alleged crime. McKelvey's friend told investigators that he observed Jones take money and slap the victim with it. The so she might have slapped them with a stack, not thrown the stack. Mm -hmm. The club surveillance cameras recorded Jones and McKelvey exchanging words before Jones hit the man with the cash and followed up with an open hand strike. Oh, they didn't mention that in the headline. Police arrested Jones for battery of misdemeanor. She was released early yesterday from the county jail at the post of $500 bond and is scheduled to for March 15th arraignment. I, I bet she's a that show your broke ass don't come in here no more fucking around with us, wasting our goddamn time, right. Uh, so Karen, guess the race for uh Victoria Jones, the worker who slapped this man with a stack of cash. Oh, Victoria. Ah, oh, what's the name of the club again? The name of the club is Body Works. Or by let me make sure it's Body Works. See, the Body Works are Body Work, but it's one of those two. Um, body Talk. I'm sorry, Body Talk. Damn, I'll take that. Body Talk. I'm going to go black. Karen says black. Let's check the chat room. Okay, Trey guessed his race. We're guessing her race. Uh, Where pour some sugar on me gets played white. She black. Big Vic, not the little one, black. Florida scripper, black. This nigga ain't the black guy who tips, but he was, uh, we're guessing, yeah, we're guessing her race. I don't know his race. I I, I don't know. Um, But okay, it seems like most of y'all think he was, okay, black. She white, so most of y'all think black. A couple of y'all think white. Uh, me and me and Stripper Jones, Stripper Jones, Stripper Jones, Stripper Jones, Jones, black. All right, the correct answer is most of you said black. Most of you missed it. Oh, Let me give it up to a couple that got it right. Okay, I'll take this in, but you said body talk. Oh, I should have been listening to booty talk. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Wrong version. Wrong version. Oh, my Ooh, bad. You're so funny. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the thing is, I would have missed this too, because I feel like Victoria Jones gives black to me. Yes. Like, just sight unseen, I would say, yeah, but like Victoria Jones, that makes sense. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be a picture of her working or just a random white woman stripper. I, I can't tell. 
what what this picture at the bottom is because mm-hmm. they don't really have a caption for it. Oh, uh, that's just a random picture they they took of somebody okay. there. So because they said they don't know what she does there. So um, but yeah, anyway, I respect Vic Victoria. I'm on yeah. her side. Me too. Don't come in here and be cheap. You in the goddamn strip club. Right. All right, bonus round. It's time to get the race. 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 All right. Georgia officials went to raid a fish farm okay. and instead they found $22.3 million worth of marijuana. God damn at the fish farm? At the fish farm. With mm-hmm. the fish high? I don't know. I a lot of seaweed over there. Yes, it was. <laughs> the Georgia Department of Agriculture and Sheriff's Office in South Georgia teamed up to make one of the largest drug busts in state history. They found more than 11,000 marijuana plants worth of millions of dollars. Oh, the weed market just took a hit. Yeah, it did. Oh, oh man. man. There's a lot of people crying right now. Right? Uh, the Agriculture Department got involved because officials first thought it was a food manufacturing plant. They went in and found something very different, uncovering what may be one of the largest indoor pot growing uh, operations in the Southeast. From seedling to full grown and ready to harvest, 11,153 plants were found inside the marijuana growing facility in rural South Georgia. It was a very sophisticated uh, operation, said the Georgia Commissioner of Agriculture, Tyler Harper. We estimated the street value to be worth $22.3 million. The department and Pierce County Sheriff's Office launched an investigation about a month ago after an undercover deputy learned the facility was a fish farm. But when they raided the place on Friday, they quickly found that was only a cover. Oh, so there was no fish farm? I guess not. Um, Because they do have such thing as a fish, fish farm. They arrested three men and one woman. They believe the group started the marijuana growing operation in Pierce County sometime in 2022 with hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in the facility. Uh, what we found was a very high tech growing operation utilizing lighting and they were watering by hand and had tail water recovery systems. The sheriff added the department thinks the finished product was shipped out of state and the suspects have ties all the way from New York City to Houston and were possibly part of a much larger drug ring. The four suspects are in jail uh, with without bond with one of them on an immigration hold because he entered the country illegally. Oh. All face charges of possession, manufacturing, and trafficking. Investigation is still ongoing. Uh, why didn't they say their names? Because uh, I thought the article had their names earlier. Huh. Now I'm not seeing their names. Oh no! Are we gonna guess if we don't know their names? I said we're gonna have to get another article then. Maybe. Um, yeah, it's weird because I definitely had names in the article that I saw first. So, all right, let me see if I can find the names for this one. Okay, if not, we can do another article. Yeah, because I feel like guessing without the names is almost impossible. Right. Um. All right, let's see if this one has the names in it. Oh, nope, that's kind of the same article. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, what about this Right one? in front of our company, we got people out here depending on us, and we just letting them down. Right. Okay, this is just copy and paste from the article that I already read. Son of a bitch. This is just embarrassing, guys. We might have to do a different article. Yeah, this normally doesn't happen to us. We we we, yeah. we, normally we, we apologize. Yeah. No, no, normally we, we have are, a lot we on are, our mind lately. We are up to the occasion. We've been stressed out, you know. Yeah, our, our testosterone levels been a little low. You know, don't don't blame us. You know, I know we hit these girl. Uh, my bad. Right. Uh, Sorry to let you down. Hit me up tomorrow night when I'm in a better mood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It don't say. It don't say what the. Yeah. It don't say what the race is. But okay. It, it was Chinese guys. They were Asian. Oh, okay. Y'all would have never got it. Free square. Y'all would have never got it. It's fine. All right. Let's go to the... <laughs> let's do this one then. Uh, cinnamon roll robber is now on ice. A Nebraska man... <laughs> That's hilarious. A Nebraska man... I guess he thought shit was sweet. Yes, a he ne- did. A Nebraska man... He got himself in a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, a Nebraska man walked into a quick shop convenience store early yesterday and demanded money. He had a Hostess cinnamon rolls box on his right hand. He had it. On, oh, in his right hand. Fearing that the container concealed a handgun and not individually wrapped frosted pastries. Oh, no. The female clerk handed over the cash. Yeah, goddamn. I wasn't going to find out either. Cops responded to the incident and they found... Isaiah Bartu, a 24-year-old Lincoln resident, at a possible as a possible suspect. While speaking with officers, he attempted to flee on foot, but was quickly detained. Uh, they turned up 4.1 grams of meth, a silver handgun, and an undisclosed amount of cash when they searched him. He was arrested on multiple felony counts, including robbery, possession of a controlled substance, and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. He's locked up in advance of his scheduled arraignment this afternoon. Um, he has a gun tattooed on his right forearm. He previously he served. Get caught. He previously served more than two years in state prison for an assault conviction. He was arrested in April 2020 for striking a liquor store employee in the head with a bottle of Jack Daniels during a robbery. God damn. Which netted him and his two female accounts accomplices two bottles of booze. Not money, booze. <laughs> All right, Karen. <laughs> Jack Daniels, you're like, why, why, no, why am I in it? Uh, uh, oh, white. All right, let's check the chat room, see what they believe. Uh, for Isaiah Bartu's race, uh, let's see, uh, they're still guessing in the chat. Mm -hmm. Give him a second, yeah, no sometimes problem. Sometimes it's a, it's a little man, a little, you know, he committed a lot of crimes. I wonder if he had the gun in there because you pull out a box and point it like a gun, it's kind of one of those uh, Schrodinger's gun. You know, like I don't want to guess it and then be wrong, and you got a gun now. I'm dead. I get, right. I don't matter. I, I believe you. Here you go. This yeah. this ain't my shit. They don't. They pay insurance for this reason. I'm not Mr. Quick Trip. I don't own this. I sure don't. Isaiah is a nigga. He be white, black. Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey, white, black. Cinnagon, white. The correct answer Cinnagon is Cinnagon black. Uh, Cinnagon black. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. You said white. The correct answer is he was white. You did miss it. I initially was going to go black because of Isaiah, but the last name don't sound like it, it's one of ours. Mm -hmm. And then you said meth. Okay, yeah, that was that. You did a great job. You got it right. Um, all right, let's go to the last thing: sword ratchetness. Kentucky State Police arrest suspect using samurai sword in Grayson County homicide. Well, Kentucky State Police says a man used a samurai sword to kill a woman. It happened Monday at a home on Indian Ridge Road in Falls of the Rough. That is in Grayson County. Police say George Greer assaulted three people living at the home. 59-year-old Teresa Bowles died at the scene. A 60-year-old man was flown to University of Louisville Hospital with life-threatening injuries. And a 32-year-old woman went to a hospital in Owensboro and is expected to recover. Greer was on the run for several hours but was eventually arrested after stealing a car that was left unlocked with the keys inside. He is charged with murder, attempted murder, and burglary. Oh, he did that. Yep. Well, can Whatever they say he did. He did all of it. All right, y'all. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us this breezy Sunday afternoon. We do. Hope y'all had a good one. Uh, and uh, until next time, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your night.